everyone. It's George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm with my good buddy, Joe Sanfilippo. He is a superintendent in Wisconsin. And um, you might have seen him on social media because uh, he always promotes his school uh, at hashtag go crickets. And it's known all over the world because of the incredible things that are happening. And I, I know Joe won't take credit for it. I know it's a lot because of his leadership, but he also puts people in positions to be really successful. And he is so enthusiastic about his work. I feel like every time he shares a story that I actually like know his school and it feels like family. Like it's, it's just amazing how, how big of an advocate he is for every level of his organization, does some really incredible things. And so I'm really excited to have a conversation with him today. So Joe, thanks for being on the podcast today. I appreciate the time. I like the intro, man. I think we should just record that part and then I'll send it out to some people and we'll be good. Can we, we can call it good. It's been fun joining you, George. Yeah, Thank you actually, so much for your time. It's actually funny, Joe, because I actually have this text that you sent me years ago that you told me you're going to delete. <laughs> you, see, you can't screenshot texts and just bring them out whenever yeah, you want. That's right. I, I think it was the one that you said that you owe me five bucks or something, something like that. that. I remember. No, yeah. Joe, Joe, and I, Joe and I will uh, we'll say, hey, I'm going to compliment you, but we'll ne I'm never going to tell anyone. That's exactly right. So this podcast isn't going to be good. I mean, people just want to just get out now, people. Get out now. It's been your best interest. Hey, so Joe, tell us a little bit about like, tell us a little bit about your educational career. Like where, like, I know we all know you're a superintendent now. Like, how did you get to that point? Well, I started out as a, uh, I taught second grade and I taught fifth grade. I taught kindergarten for like six months. And I'm like, that, well, it's get, time to go out of that. Like, that was not for me, man. I mean, nap time came and snack time came and I wanted both. So I was out of there early. And I taught second grade for a little while, uh, three years. And I taught fifth grade. And then I was a counselor uh, for a couple of years. And I coached basketball and I coached golf and then got into the principalship. It was funny because the principalship, you know, kind of came up where we just kind of, you know, I know that my wife wanted to move back to this area of the state. So we just kind of, you know, there was an opening for a principal position in this area in a bigger school district. And we thought, well, we'll give it a shot. You know, I, I hadn't even graduated at that point. And so we, 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 you know, we just put the application in it turned out it's like one of those things where you kind of get on a roll with questions you get on a roll with the process and you're like man I think that it worked out okay so we ended up there as a principal and then um, about five years into that uh, we knew that at some point we wanted to move to a smaller community and this principal position came open in Fall Creek and the then superintendent called me and said you know this might be a place for you to take a look at because he had actually raised his kids in the district and he had come yep. back to be the interim superintendent so he's like you know you should come take a look at it and see what they have to offer and I came out and I talked to him and just fell in love with the place man and then I just you know it's been the best decision ever to be out here we've got incredible people and it's it's been fun to watch them grow and um, just take such pride in this community so then I've been, uh, I've been in Fall Creek for, this is my 10th year, man. This is uh, my ninth superintendent year, or just finishing my eighth superintendent year. And, um, and then 10 years overall. So now that you're finishing what you said, your eighth superintendent year. So yeah. in the years that you've been there, has there been anything like what's going on right now? Uh, absolutely not. And I think that the, the thing that was really important about this process. And this is an awful situation. Let's be yep. clear about that, just in terms of where we're at, where, where kids are at. But I did tell our staff that it's gonna bring two things to the surface immediately. And the first one is how well do we know our kids? And the second one is what are we willing to do for them when they're gone? Mm -hmm. And those two questions have been answered unequivocally in this school district by the people who are doing incredible things for kids. The first and foremost, and we've talked about this before, the idea that we're connecting with kids and asking them how they're doing and what they need, as opposed mm -hmm. to making sure that they get some work done, right? And so our job has been completely changed at the same time, not changed at all in that the most important thing will always be how do we develop relationships with kids and make sure that they know that we believe in the work that they do. Well, I think this is actually like, I've been thinking about this quite a bit because I, I know there's people and, and I, and I agree to some extent, they'll say, you know what, you like, you don't need relationships to like learn from somebody. And the reason why I agree with that to some extent is I, I know I've had, you know, professors that I've learned from that I had no, like they had no interest who I was mm -hmm. um, or anything like that. They were amazing presenters. I could listen to them all day. And there was no relationship there and I could learn from them. But my contention is that with the relationship, 
you can go so much further. And I think it's actually kind of an exposure is that if you actually don't have a relationship with the kids right now in a time where, you know, their social emotional needs are obviously the most important thing. Like I, one of the blessings that I have as a dad right now, and I know this sounds weird. My daughter has no clue what's going on. The Mm -hmm. like, it's actually the best thing that's happened to her in her three and a half years is her dad is home every single day. And she's excited about that. And so I think that that relationship piece, you know, people like it's being exposed to how important it actually is to the people that have been like arguing that it isn't really that crucial for teaching and learning. I'm like, well, you can learn from people you don't like, but in reality, you're going to learn way more when you do have a connection. I don't, I, I completely agree. I, and I think about it just in terms of think about books that you read, right? Some books that you, you're going to read a book and you're going to learn something from the book and that's yeah. fantastic. But if you read the book and you have a connection to the author, you can ask questions and get deeper into the context totally. of what that place is. Now you're going to learn more and you're going to be more invested because you know exactly where those words are coming from. It's like, I, I mentioned something in a tweet the other day about, about this podcast in particular. I, I love the books. Like I love the, the conversation. I love your blog post, yeah. but when you can dive deeper and have a conversation, conversation with somebody about the work that's happening and you can see them face to face and you can see the emotion and you see the passion in the work that they do and develop a conversation that moves over time. You're going to, you're just going to learn more. I believe you're going to learn more. You can still learn. There's no question about that, but you're going to be much more invested. You're going to be willing to ask questions and you're going to move things forward a lot faster because you know the person or because you're invested with the relationship and the text as opposed to just the text. Mm -hmm. And like, I, like I'm listening to you and it really brings up a point that I've been really trying to emphasize for years now. And I, I see it's actually becoming more important is that there's a really, to me, technology can be a really good thing or a really bad thing. And when I see it as a bad thing is when we just kind of dump a kid to the content, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Hey, here's this website. You could do this program, you know, and I could, like, there's some benefits obviously in that, but that's not what I want to see as the standard. But I think right now, everyone's seeing how we can use technology to kind of build relationships and connect in a different way and just kind of listening to you. You know, part of the reason I do the podcast in this format is because you, I can post it on like audio mediums. I post it on YouTube so people can see me and kind of whatever they need, but that I can kind of dig deep and just like, I don't edit any of this stuff. I just actually talk and just share my thinking because I want people to actually have that connection to kind of what I'm going through right now. And so I guess my question for you is when you go back and you have kids face to face, like maybe what are some of the practices that you might actually like better uh, using technology build relationships? Like I know one of the things that you're very well known for is those one minute walks that you do the video. And I know that you'll continue to do that, but is there some other ways you could see how you can use technology to kind of build relationships when we are actually are back? Yeah, I think the first thing that we need to, to, to kind of realize about the connection and the technology piece is, is it's never really been about the device at the same time, the connection. And the, the reason I say that is because right now, what our people are realizing is the connection comes in so many different mediums, like you're mentioning with the audio, with the video and that kind yeah. of thing. We, I just, we just told our people, you need to connect with, like I told them, you can't do this wrong if you connect with kids. You can do this wrong if you push content and expect kids to just know and understand what they do. And our first two days being you know, into this situation, we were very clear and told people, no content, no, mm-hmm. no, no assignments, nothing. Just call them and see how they're doing and what they need. And when we do that, when you put the emphasis on that part of it, not only are you allowing yourself the opportunity to connect with the kid, but value the family and the time that they're having too, because it's not just a conversation with the kid about what they need. It's a conversation with the family about what they need. And if I take anything from this, the thing that I'll take the most is that some kids are really, really excited to let you into their world outside of here. Mm -hmm. Some kids are not at all excited to let you into their world outside of here. So if we're expecting people to connect on, like, we're going to do a video chat, we're going to have everybody come in at nine o'clock and do the book and do the blah, blah, blah. At the, if that's the only time that we're connecting with these people, we're already setting up little clicks because some people are not going to be willing to let them into their space from a video lens, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're not real excited about their space from a video lens. Right. And so the connection with kids doesn't have to be the video. It doesn't even have to be the video chat or you know, oh, this. It's a call. 
It's taking the stuff that they need out of their desk and driving it to their house and seeing them through a window and saying, I miss you. I care about you. Here's some stuff. And I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow when I call you on the phone to see how these things went. The connection is incredible. At the same time, it can't be because, because of one device or one piece. Of, it, we have to exercise every opportunity to try to figure out what's best for that kid and that family. And if we do that, we're going to be better along the way because now we've realized that it's not just about the piece of whatever technology or whatever it is. So, I don't know. I, I, th- I don't know. If, I, I'm not trying to skirt the question, but I think it really comes, no. it comes back to the relationship. What I'll take out of this is the importance of knowing your kids before you get into a situation like this. So when you do, you know how to help them navigate through it. Well, I, I think I, I actually think you nailed the question because as I'm listening to you, one of the things I always say is that flex or is technology should personalize, not standardize. Yeah. And so for example, if I say to a, like a group of kids, Hey, you all need to make this video. And some are like, I actually don't want to be in this video. Teachers are feel the same way. Right. Right. Um, but like I would say, you got to, here's some options. Here's some things you can consider. You're really honoring the kid. And it's the same thing, right? When we were talking about teaching English and we're talking about communication. Well, some mm-hmm. kids don't want their writing out there. Some right. kids, you know, want it out there. Some kids would rather do a podcast. Some would do a tutorial, whatever. And so I think that again, going back to that relationship piece. And like I said, you, you really nail this. It is about the personalization, knowing who the kids are, what will actually make them, I think, you know, feel comfortable, but we also want to like, we build that comfort. So we, they trust us so we can push them to get better. And I think that's part of the challenge. And I know that you're, that's a focus of what you're doing in school. And I just hope that as we go back and we're, we're back in school, we have that same mentality for the online setting that we do the face to face, right? Like some kids don't want to, to like talk up in front of the entire class because that's not their space. And it doesn't mean they don't have a ton of great stuff to contribute. They just don't want to necessarily contribute the way you're asking them right now or mandating that they do. Yeah, absolutely. That's for the other piece that's really come out with us is what's truly important in terms of the work that we're assigning or the work that we're getting out there. You know, when it comes down to, have you really identified what's needed moving forward? Because I think a lot of times we get into the space where you've been in the work for five, 10, 15, 20 years, whatever the case may be, and things start to feel comfortable and you don't even know that you're piling and you're piling and you're piling because it just becomes the new normal of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And our job is really to kind of take a another look at what that is and identify for kids what's really needed to move forward as opposed to what's nice for us because we've done it in the past. So I got I want to ask you about um, a book that you wrote with mm-hmm. Tony Sinanis. It's called Hacking Leadership, right? Mm-hmm. And I know you wrote this, what, probably three, four years, years ago. ago. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about that book and kind of the relevance to like how the the lessons apply to right now. Yeah, I think it it has a a great application to now because we're trying to find new ways to figure out old problems. And, you know, I think the the thing about hacking leadership that was that Tony and I really enjoyed about it was, you know, it wasn't this big philosophy on, you know, all kids should learn. Well, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate (laughs) that all kids should learn. That's great. But these are 10 ways that are going to make your your world a little bit easier in terms of connecting with kids on a different level. So I think that the, the big piece about that book that's relevant now is that there are quick takeaways that not only that you can put together and get out there right away, but then there's also some, you know, how do you deal with pushback when it comes to, you know, things that are going on in your world and deal with that and just think about things a little bit differently. So I think the biggest part for us was just giving people an opportunity as leaders to think about things a little bit differently without feeling like, you know, it had to come into some sort of philosophical bend of, you know, all kids can learn. I mean, yeah, all kids should learn. That's fantastic. But tell me some how, give me something how. Right. And, and when you're talking like uh, Tony, it's funny because Tony Sinanis is a mutual friend of ours. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you really know how him and I connected. And I'm sure it's not going to surprise you at all. Basically, we both figured out the other one was Greek. <laughs> and then we started talking to each other. Like we never, we actually took us about, like we actually got fights over stuff yeah. on the phone before we actually ever met because, you know, <laughs> it's kind of how we were brought up like in Greek families, like our, our families are immigrants and um, it's just kind of like Greek culture and just, he, he's an, he's an awesome guy. And, and one of the other things that you, you, you two talk about um, is really, and you do this probably the best in the world uh, is really sharing the stories. 
uh, from your schools. And so like, what, like, how are you kind of sharing those stories right now? And why, why does it matter? Like, why does it matter right now? Well, I thank you. I appreciate that. And I think that the first thing that you need is a story to share. The other thing I'm thinking is I must be Greek because I fight with both of you on the phone all the time anyway. So <laughs> clearly, can I just claim, can I claim being Greek when we fight and say, this is just how we are so right the, now. That's what happens. The, the difference though, is that you lose, <laughs> right? <laughs> Tony, right? Tony and I will never lose. And also, Even when we're I'm fighting not, each other, we both that's win. Right. Yeah, I understand. I understand. You, Congratulations you to both of you. All right. Yeah, so I think the first thing that you need when it, when it comes down to sharing the story of schools is a story, right? Like every mm -hmm. story has a great character. Every story has, you know, a climax. Every story has some resolution to it. I think we really take that, that on when it comes to the work that we do. And the great characters of the 850 incredible kids that we have here and the 100 staff members that want to do right by kids all the time. So if you're always in the context of making sure that their, their voice is out there, you have a better opportunity and almost kind of going back to what you're saying about like everybody doesn't want their voice out there all the time, making sure you know people and how they want their share, their story shared mm -hmm. really gives you an opportunity to share it and value the work that they do. However it is that they're doing that work. Cause not like you, like you said before, not everybody wants their stuff out there and that's okay. But mm -hmm. at the same time, if we can celebrate the kids through the eyes of the teacher, the kid, the teacher through the eyes of the kids and knowing what that looks like, you can value what their space is. And it just gives us momentum. Momentum, George. I mean, honestly, it just gives people such momentum in times like this where you get this, you get everybody moving in the right direction and gives you social capital for when things don't go well. These are, you know, it's an opportunity for us to share stories in every day and, and real stories, like real stories, not this, the story that has the emotion that has the, you know, the kid making sure that they, they see something for the first time or the, or the teacher really passionate about the activity and making sure that not only that person knows about that it's great work, but people outside of here by creating momentum to, you know, texting the, the parent of the kid, if you do a podcast with them and just say, Hey, I'm going to put this out. I just want you to hear it. It was unbelievable. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. You're going to love to hear the excitement in their voice and then you just wait and let that parent get you know let the parent wait because they're going to be the first one to share that they're going to be the first one to build momentum for you so it's not always about you bragging on your school i'll brag on this school all day yeah i'll run with these people all day right but there are some people in the world that think you're just sitting there bragging on them well you know what if you tell the story through the eyes of an eight-year-old then a lot of people are willing to step away from it right and not jam on you because you're you're bragging on the school i'm bragging about the eight-year-old and i'm going to mm. do it every day that's what we're going to do. And our people deserve to have that story told. You know, I, I was asked by, a, uh, it's funny because I'm looking out on a football field and I see the teacher's uh, son out there right now. And this teacher asked me, she's like, you know, what's your vision for us as we move forward? And I'm like, I'll tell you, let's, let's be serious. Like, it's not my vision. It's never been my vision. I'm just here to be really loud about it. I can tell you what my hope is. My hope is that you feel the way that I feel when I talk about you. Because if you feel the way that I feel when I talk mm -hmm. about you, then you're going to feel incredibly great about the work that you do. These people are changing lives. Let others know that they're changing lives. They deserve that. Right. And, and uh, I think one of the things that I'm hearing when I, uh, is really empowering people to tell their own story too. Yeah. And the, the, one of the things I've advocated for years is every student has, has the opportunity to have a digital portfolio so they can share their story. And people push back, well, not every kid wants their stuff online. I'm like, that's true. But I didn't say that every kid should have their stuff online, but every kid should have the opportunity. And I don't think actually schools give us that opportunity, right? Because a lot of times it's someone else telling that kid's story. And I think that's good for a certain point, but that kid should also have an opportunity to like share and connect with people around the world and be able to do this because, you know, you see a lot of people creating opportunities for themselves because they have a compelling story, because they're doing some incredible things. And, and, they have access to stuff we didn't like, like I always say this, if you wanted to be an artist um, 30 years ago, someone had to say your work is good enough for me to put it into my gallery. And so they had to prove it. Now, if you want to be an artist, you could share your stuff on Instagram, whatever, and you can build a community around it. You're not waiting for someone else to give you that permission and to say, you know, this is, this is okay to share. And so I think one of the things that I'm really proud of you as a friend is how you empower people to share their story too. And, kids that connect. I think it's, it's really, really powerful. Um, I have one last question for you, but I just want to talk about something real quick. Um, so last year during this time, I had told you that Kawhi Leonard was playing the best in it. the playoffs <laughs> and you text me back that I was wrong. 
No, and you said he was the best player in the world, and I said he wasn't. He right was playing now, the best at the time. Well, right that's now, what I said. That's playoffs. what I yeah, said. I, I said I he's the best player right now. God. And I'm not, I'm not even asking a question here. I'm just telling you something. <laughs> so he laughed at me, and then the Raptors won the championship. And so yeah. one of the things that would really bother me about this whole thing, and I know like it's such a superficial thing, is if the NBA season would be canceled. Because, you know, know, we both love basketball. Right. But on the other hand, that would be the Raptors are the NBA champions oh, two years God. in a row. So basically, yeah. we are NBA champions from 2019. Right to at least 2021 so it's a really good thought no i actually i'm not asking you anything i'm not did did, did i say that before or after you got stuck with your finger in your mouth eating nacho cheese on national television that was way before that was was way way before before. okay good i wanted to make sure that we got that out too because that's the greatest picture of all time (laughs) yeah if if you're watching if you're watching watching the video here's the picture so you can see Right I love so, it. It's the yeah. greatest. This thing is why you. Time. This is why you subscribe on YouTube, <laughs> is so you can see the picture because now it's being posted. <laughs> Anyways, that that wasn't a question. I just wanted to remind everyone that yeah, the, the just wait. The Bucks were up two nothing in that series, <laughs> and then they lost four straight. That was it. Yes, I, yeah. I I remember that. That was but, actually. The but Yanis Yanis is Greek, so I do love he him. Is. But it's like it goes Canada, then <laughs> and everyone else, right? The Bucks have two years left, and then we got real problems. So yeah. man, this is and not he, helping our situation and at he's all. Go, and he's going to Toronto. When I know. Done. Well, so well no, he's not. Jeez, come on. He's like of all places. Okay, good. Give me another question. It is. Thanks. Last we lost question. half the people listening to this thing already. Right? <laughs> Last so, question. So four are gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the, what's the best advice you give to educators right now? Oh, man. The best advice that I can give. Oh, you're going to get me. The best advice that I can give to any educator right now is, A, know your worth. Yeah. Know your worth. Because what's happened in this time is that we have, we've had, up, leading up to this time, I think people didn't know their worth. I really did. I think people yeah, kind of bagged themselves. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm only, I'm just. There's no question what your worth is at the same time. Don't lean on that and say, see, I told you, right? See, I told you our job is really hard. This is where you lean into families and say, I understand that you're having a hard time. And this is anything that we can do to help you get through this time. That's what we're here for. That's our job. Our job is to help. Your job is not to teach. Our job is to help you in this environment. And if they know their worth, they'll be willing to talk about their story. People don't talk about their story if they don't feel that their story has worth, if they don't feel that their story has value. When they know that their story has value, they'll talk to everybody about it. And I, and I love that. And just so you know, everyone cries on my podcast for some yeah. reason. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just, I was looking at, I figured yeah. I was upset that we had to postpone it so many times. So your hair was right. <laughs> It's always right. I was, <laughs> I was actually, we had to postpone it so many times until your hair was right. Yeah, that's what I'll see you in 2027 right, after Rogaine right. comes back on the market. <laughs> well, I, I think just kind of building on what you just said, I think not only are they realizing their worth, I think people are being reminded why they became educators. Yeah, Like absolutely. why it's so valuable. And, and I think that there's a lot of extra stuff that's saying like, hey, this is not important right now. And it's like, well, then why do you make us do it during the entire year? If it's really not, if we could push this aside then what? And I think now people can actually really focus. I know it's hard to focus on some things, but they can focus on like, they want to make an impact on kids. They want to help people. Right. And that, that's why the majority, if not all people got into education in the first place was just to help. Right. And so I, I really appreciate that. Anyways, Joe, thanks for your time. Um, and can you just, I know I'll share all of Joe's links where you can connect with them in the, in the, in the description links. But also, Joe, can you just tell, just give a little shout out to, uh, you got a hashtag in the background there. Can you tell us? Yeah, about- yeah. My people, all my people with the Go Crickets, everybody doing some incredible things. And if you want to, if you want to connect with us, you know, find the Go Crickets hashtag online. You can check it out. You know, during this whole time away, we're reading stories to kids every morning at eight o'clock on our Facebook page, just to give parents 20 minutes to just step away from their right. day and start on a, on a good note. We're giving away stuff and just trying to make sure that people are invested in the process with us. And if you like, if you want to check in those, uh, anyone could ch- watch those Facebooks, right? Absolutely. Cause you're yeah. reading like two minute books, but if you read, talk to Joe, 
A two minute book will take 20. So <laughs> I do a magic trick too, George. I saw a magic. I don't know if you've, if you've seen that. I like, I, I'm seen. making stuff levitate. Like that's the big word for <laughs> kindergarten seen. kids, but I'm telling them about it. I've seen, I've seen. <laughs> Anyways, man. Uh, thanks, Joe. Really appreciate right. your leadership. I uh, appreciate it. And make sure, uh, watch every Saturday Joe posts. It's every Saturday, right? You yeah. One yeah. minute walk. I'm trying. Trying. And and whenever whenever I got really, stuff to say. They're really, they're really inspiring. So thanks again, Joe. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for your Thank dude. You. And give my best to your whole community because I know um, they're doing an incredible job. I've been watching. So yeah. Well, All do. right, man. Thanks, everybody. Go crickets. Thanks, everybody. All right.